Greetings faculty and welcome to another WIST tutorial. In today's topic we'll be talking with Tom Heilman and how he has taken the paper out of marking papers. Here's Tom. So Tom, you've been an English teacher at WIST for quite some time now and it's just all of a sudden now that uh, you're sort of changing the way that uh, you're marking papers. Um, this is kind of a risk and, and I'm wondering if you could actually take a, take a few minutes to explain sort of your reason behind moving to kind of an iPad-based app for, for marking papers and, and kind of what are the features that attract you to using this technology um, with your students? So. Okay. Um, one of the frustrating things as an English teacher is to spend quite a lot of time grading essays or, or writing assignments, in particular putting a lot of comments on them, assigning a grade, turn the paper back to the student and you know you find that the student looks very quickly at the grade, doesn't pay attention to a lot of the comments. Not that everything I say is, is really valuable, but the comments are, I mean, well the comments are designed to generate improvement on some of the critical tasks in, in writing. Students look at the grade, don't really look at the comments. Next assignment comes along, you find that you are sort of repeating the same comments all the time and the improvement isn't always seen as quickly as you would like. So I've been experimenting this year with a number of uh, assessment practices. Um, one of the things um, that I started doing and, and liked quite a bit and may go back to is handing back papers, comments only on them, and, and no grade and then asking the students to write a response to those comments. And that worked really wonderfully well. But I started to think that I'm giving the students an additional writing assignment on a writing assignment. And some of my students are so pressed for time when I actually want them to write their comments or their response to my comments. So that was getting a little frustrating. What I experimented with that after that was giving the papers back, comments on them, grades, but appending an mp3 audio file so that as they went through the comments they were hearing my oral commentary on that. That worked just great. A lot of positive feedback on that. Then, well, I talked to you mm -hmm. um, about in increasing that and I ran into this software called, or you recommended this software called Explain Everything which actually allows me to do written comments on the paper either in advance or live as I'm marking the paper, append oral comments to it as I'm marking the paper or oral commentary on the marks I've already made, create a short film of that that the students can then then play back. And what I really like about that is um, that cuts to solving another problem I feel I have in particular with my marking and sometimes I look at the student papers I've marked and, and when I'm done it's almost like a logic puzzle for me and, and I just mark the puzzle and I imagine a student looking at that paper and seeing all those comments and wondering one where to begin and how to I decipher really what Mr. Hallman is saying. The oral commentary and the marking as I'm going through it, I'm able to elaborate right there at the moment so there's there's no more puzzle. Great. So could you kind of walk us through this uh, Explain Everything app and kind of highlight some of the features you used most frequently uh, with your students? Sure. I'll show you. It's a very simple app. Um, just click there. Here you see on screen green here, um, quite a number of projects I already have underway or, or, or completed. What I've done with these, I've taken student papers from Moodle and I've either uploaded them as Word documents or I've scanned them into, uploaded them into my Dropbox as Word documents or scanned them in as PDF files. And then I simply would click on new project, but I'm not going to click on new project here. Um, I click on a project here that I say I have underway. Uh, we can just pick any one. We'll pick that one. Now, I just want to interrupt you for a second. Um, mm -hmm. This this is actually penmanship that's going on on the screen, and, and 
you're able to do this with a, a stylus. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a lovely stylus. I think I got this from a company called Adonit. It allows me to write fairly um, fine point commentary on here. It's, it's, it's very pressure sensitive. There's, there's really no problems or, or slowing down of writing. But anyhow, here's a paper where I've already made quite a number of comments on that. I can continue to make comments on that if, if I want. I simply would click there. I'll hold that down, I'm sorry. And if I wanted to start commenting, say, in, in, in green, I would click there. I select my pen thickness, which I would have up there, and my pen tip, which is there. And if I was going through here and I wanted to comment on that, I would simply circle that, and I can, can go up here and just you know make a point, for example, like that. If I'm wanting to append um, oral commentary to it, um, this paper's already done, so it's, it's not that a problem. Uh, when I'm ready to append the oral commentary, I simply would click on record, and now I'm actually doing voiceover on it. It's very, very simple. When I'm done doing the voiceover, just hit stop there. When I'm done with the project, there's a save feature down there. A couple things I really like about it are, are the options it gives you for the penmanship. If, for example, I don't want to underline everything or I just want to highlight some things, I can go in here, click on that, do that, click on that pen thickness, go there, and then I can start just highlighting things. And I, I really like to do that on student papers to highlight all the quotations they're using. Um, Great, so you mentioned um, you tend to mark up the papers before appending, before adding the, the audio commentary. Um, can you explain some of your reasoning for doing it that way rather than as you go? Yeah, I found that if I'm marking as I go along, for example, I, I would pause here. I mean, if I'm appending the oral commentary, I would pause. Hang on a minute, let me bring this little feature up. I would pause here, say, talking about this run-on, and I, I would talk about run-on sentences. And then as I move down further in the paper, I have another run-on sentence and another run-on sentence. And, and sometimes the commentary I found can get way too long for a, sh a short paper. So I, I found it's better to just go through, mark everything up, get an overall sense of the paper, make some overall comments on the, uh, on the bottom of the paper, and then as I go back, I can sort of bring all my comments together and really move through it and highlight some things. And that I do, you know, with this laser, you know, as I'm talking, I'd emphasize that or emphasize the tense shift problems there and pass a voice there and then move on down through the paper. Now, in terms of delivery, um, getting this to the students, you mentioned it making a film, but that film is it's, it's on your iPad. How do you go about getting it to uh, your students? It's very, very easy. Um, let's see here. I can tell you or perhaps I can show you. Let's see if I can show you. No, I don't want to save changes. If I would go here, I would click export and I would highlight a particular paper there. I send these as movies to my Dropbox and I would just click that and it would just go through and just export it as a short film into my Dropbox. For my Dropbox I, I have two options. I can save it in a public Dropbox folder and then send in a private email link to that Dropbox to each student or I can upload it to their school YouTube account and that's sure. private as well. Great, okay. Now it, it's it's great in this day and age of kind of everyone's trying to be sustainable and we're using less paper and um, but but this program isn't without its faults and I'm, I'm wondering if you could point out kind of in your exploration of, of using explain everything some of the things that you find a little bit irritating um, and what's your how you work around um, them sure there's what and there's actually just one little glitch and it's not a little glitch but it, it's it's going to be a temporary glitch I found, one of the things I found difficult to do here at school is to find a quiet place in which to append my oral commentary. So I decided to do all the pre-marking in, in advance, all, sorry, all of, load up, all of this stuff. 
do that in advance and then do the oral commentary later at home because I can save it once I've made all these comments on it. What I have found out is that there's a little glitch in the program that often causes the text not doing it. There you see it did it there now. That when you go back and touch it, the text shifts. I wrote the company at your suggestion, Richard, made them aware of this problem. They wrote me back the very next day, said they were very aware of it and that uh, I was going to find this correction in the next update, which should come along soon. Once they get that little glitch nailed down, this will be pretty ideal for my uses. Great. Well, I think this is a great way to use uh, technology on campus, and uh, thank you for taking the time to kind of share this with us. And uh, we'll check in again at another point, hopefully. Okay.